The views and opinions expressed on Unlock Your Wealth Radio are those of the host, guests, and callers only and are not necessarily the views of Unlock Your Wealth Radio, Heather Wagonalls, or Success Publishing International. More willpower than a barefoot woman at a shoe sale. Able to stretch a single paycheck for an entire month. Makes money concepts easier than third grade math. Introducing your purveyor of prosperity, Heather Wagonall. Work all day, stress all night. Take your mind off your money and focus on your life. Money don't matter for the stuff it bought. It's the way you think, not what you've got, yeah. Unlock Your Wealth Radio starts now. That was good. It had a little bass in that voice there. Well, you know, I'm a bass singer. (laughs) I love it. (laughs) Welcome to the bass singer version of Unlock Your Wealth Radio. So, what's what's my range? What am I? Soprano? No, I'm not a soprano. I'm an alto. You're an alto. I am your purveyor of prosperity, Heather Wagon Halls. I am flanked by this guy. The ultimate bass and maestro of moolah, Michael Terry. Hey, folks. And we're going to help you get your money mind right on today's final episode of season 34. So, uh, yeah, so that is... um, it's going to be a wrap today. So we have a lot to think about. So this is our first season into the new year. So it's our first financial quarter of the new year. It's okay. ending, mm-hmm. you know, um, in a, in a day. And how did we do? That's the question. Yeah. That's the question. I know, uh, as the CEO of a public company every day, my husband reads this printout and every day it's like, how much do we got to sell today? How much do we got to sell today? Are we going to make our numbers? Because that's what wall street wants to know. Yeah. Are we going to make our numbers? So, um, We, uh, so we're going to talk about that on today's show. Did you make your numbers? And, uh, we're going to talk a little bit about our key, uh, 12 review, revise and recommit. So we've got, as always, Moolah word of the day. We've got our key this week and we're going to do a quarterly wrap. And if that's not enough to keep you busy over the next 27 minutes, We also have to talk about next season because season 35 is upon us. In addition, it is also going to be our first all-female personal finance season as we're going to do our Chick Empowerment Series. And it's also National Financial Literacy Month. Lots of stuff going on. But first, how about digesting more material... In less time. Being a voracious reader. That would be the key. That would be the key. And our sponsor actually has everything to do with why I picked them because of this week's key, which has become a voracious reader, and that's audible.com. So there are so many great books, you know, because of the self-publishing platforms out there and this digital era that we live in, we have access to more information than ever before. And so as a result... There's more great information, not just copious amounts of information, but there's a lot of quality people that may not have ever been heard because of traditional publishing houses not picking them up, but they can self-publish and we can still get the good stuff, Mm -hmm. okay? And we can have an impact in other people's lives. And so as a human being, you know, like some water coolers have chatter about the game that was on or chatter about the latest holiday endeavors or chatter about some industry event. And ultimately, it always gets back to chatter about the latest, greatest book. And you're like, man, not only do I not know what they're talking about (laughs) because I haven't read it, I don't have time to read it. There's no way that I can say, I can't sit down for five minutes, people are telling me. Heather, you want me to read for five minutes? I cannot sit down for five minutes on the toilet without a kid bothering me. Audible solves that problem. It does, and that's our show sponsor. So they, in cooperation with our fabulous radio show, have agreed to give you a free audiobook, no commitment necessary. All you have to do is visit audibletrial.com forward slash unlock your wealth and click on the link to start 
uh, to click on the link to start reading over 150,000 titles to choose from for your iPhone, Android, Kindle, or MP3 player. It's super great. You know, I've been with the app for a decade, maybe yeah. since it first came out. I was really? like early adopter. Oh wow. yeah. It's been out that long. Yeah, just about 10. It's almost a decade. I think it's been out a little bit longer. I didn't hear about it. I, I got on the Kindle bandwagon, but then that became a problem because I wasn't just traveling in the writing sense. I was now driving traveling. And so you can't really read and drive. It's not a good combination. Not, a good not when your eyes are needed for the road. However, you know, just like if you were having a casual conversation with somebody sitting next to you in the car, audible.com fills that gap. And now your car can become a rolling university. And that's what I love about it. Yeah. So if you missed it, this week's key, Miguel. Become a voracious reader. Very good. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. So if you missed it, you can still listen to or watch, as the case may be, this week's show. Because now we do our Keys to Riches live on Unlock Your Wealth Live on Facebook. So all you have to do is visit our show page at facebook.com forward slash Unlock Your Wealth Radio. Make sure that you like the page and then click to turn on notifications so you always know every time we do another live episode. Now, our formal show if you will, is on Mondays at 9 a.m. Pacific. This is where we do the key in its entirety, and we also open the floor up to discussion. And it's been getting great. You know, people have been starting to ask questions. I'm also beaming in people. If they're on a high speed or Wi-Fi network, I can beam them in and they can actually be a part of the show. So if you have a question about money management, if you have a question about personal finance, achieving financial freedom, whatever it is, please tune into the show and participate. You can always inbox me from the radio show page, Unlock Your Wealth Radio. But if you want to participate and get your yes. your a question answered live. This is better. Exactly. Well, you've been in on the show. You've tuned yeah. in. Mm -hmm. It's your day off technically, but yeah. you come in and watch the show. So it's something that's, that could be really, really fun for you and educational at the same time. Who knew you could have fun and learn something? But it's great. So this week's key is all about becoming a voracious reader. And I highly recommend that you tune in to this broadcast. Even if you didn't get to see it live, it's still worth watching because of the tools glean and the questions that were asked and answered. So that's what's critical is always get what other people are thinking. Because you might think, oh my gosh, I'm so stupid. I must be all alone in thinking this. And yeah. then you watch and you're like, oh my gosh, other people are having this problem too. Right. I'm glad I'm not the only one. Right. It makes you feel better not like, because because then it's like, oh, okay, I'm not just some stupid weirdo out here that can't figure this out. There are other people like me that are struggling with this. And that's because, you know, our educational system, our media and stuff like that isn't making it clear. So join us for the key in its entirety. And for those of you who aren't familiar, um, the Keys to Riches is a financial philosophy I created. It's a baker's dozen of financial concepts that teach you how to think like the rich and be in control of your own money. It also gives you techniques to eat, eliminate debt, save and invest all while transforming your current financial habits into healthy money management skills. We do this one week at a time, one key at a time with my biology-based approach to success on Mondays at 9 a.m. Pacific. But make sure you turn on notifications because every once in a while I come up with a good scam and I want to give you a scam alert, you know, for our money, credit, and you listeners. And so I always have updates that you need to be paying attention to that I just hop on real quick and give you a news update. So be sure to pay attention to those as well. Moving right along, let's talk moolah word of the day. Sounds good. It, I do have one. It's a simple word. We've done it before. Uh-huh. But people still have questions concerning this. And and a depression is the word. A depression is a period during which business activity drops significantly. High unemployment rates and deflation often accompany a depression. And we've only had one real big one, right? Well, but we've had little guys, too, along the way. They call those recessions. No, well, no. We've had little depression. We have the Great Depression, but we've had, other okay. depre we've had other depressions. But a depression and a recession are different. And this kind of goes into a joke that my grandfather used to tell, and I think I shared it before on this show. But for those of you who are joining us for the first time, welcome <laughs> to my crazy sense of humor. So, <laughs> Miguel, what is the difference between a recession and a depression? 
This is like a riddle. Yeah, you got to solve this. This is a joke. It's a joke. It is a joke. But it's also the truth. It illustrates what the concept is. So the difference between a recession and a depression is in a recession, your neighbor is unemployed. In a depression, you're unemployed. (laughs) So you get it? I get it. You get it. So we've had some recessions, but, you know, we've had some mild depressions. And, you know, that's what, what concerns me. I would be concerned that we're on the same path, you know, and it's so funny. You've got all these doomsdayers, economy people. But I really like that one guy we had like two seasons ago that said, you know, we need to not, we need to get over it because of the size of the millennials class yeah. oh, I of people. That. That remember that show. guy? Yeah. You know, and he says that even though we've got economic indicators that saying we're going to take a crap again, and you know how I always watch the median home price to median income ratio. Yeah. Yeah. That's my indicator. And for point one is where the bubble popped and the mortgage industry exploded yeah. and, and, and just decimated everybody. So, and we're a 4.0 right now, which makes me concerned, yeah. mm-hmm. you know, because prices are still rising. They haven't stabilized. Prices are climbing and so is inventory, which is a weird anomaly, mm. you know, so that kind of, that concerns me. But because of the size of the baby boomers, you know, and the largest single age demographic is 26, if you remember from that interview, that we've still got people that now they're a little bit later on the blooming scale because, you know, their their parents forced them to go to college first. So they're crazy in debt. But, you know, as they get through the later part of their 20s, they're starting to get a handle on it. They're starting to fall in love. Those hormones and those uh, baby vibes of procreation are starting to come upon us and people are starting to pair off and settle down. And what does that mean when you're having babies or, you know, for the first time or increasing your personal family population? You're going to get serious about your money. You're going to start saving and start investing and you start buying things like houses and diapers and and large appliances and stuff. So I think that the economically speaking, that we can maybe avoid a depression. And I just saw numbers that came came out this morning, as a matter of fact, and I printed out the paperwork. What is good is that it showed that personal incomes have risen over the last financial quarter. Hmm. And so that's a good thing. More money back into the pockets of taxpayers is a good thing. If you find yourself making more money, but it bumps you up into a higher tax bracket where you're more of your paycheck is getting gouged, I recommend that you visit with your CPA tax attorney and then go visit your HR department at work and say, I need to up my allowances. Especially if you're getting refunds at the end of the year, you're giving Uncle Sam essentially an interest-free loan on your money. Mm -hmm. And you might as well have that in your own pocket. It is a pay-as-you-go system, but you don't have to overpay as you go. So go in and adjust your allowances because you can make better decisions with more money today. You can invest more today if you have more of dollars that you're already earning. Like we look at, we look at, tax refunds is some manna from heaven know, and it's not it was our hard-earned money that yeah. should have never been taken to begin with and so you know what to do with your money best you already know what to do if you're not doing it it's because your resources aren't aligned but then again that's why you're listening to unlock your wealth radio right. because i'm making success simple for people just like you who want to overcome your personal and professional challenges to get out of debt create financial freedom and live the life of your dreams not 20 years from now but right Right now, yeah. and you can do that with my fabulous friend, the power of compound interest. And uh, we need to court him more and more. We need to maximize that. But and we're going to talk about money on this show. We're going to talk about your money and specifically fin- this financial quarter. And you know, it's funny because I, I watch how people do things, their behaviors. As you know, I study the brain and behavior. I'm doing some more research with this really great psychologist, Dr. Um, Sanford Silverman here in Scottsdale, Arizona. And he's at the Southwest Center for Neuro something. I can't think of what it is off the top of my head. Mm-hmm. I see the sign. I go there all the time. Yeah. I'm going there today. Anyway. Um, Oh, yeah. So, so, but we're going to, as I was saying, uh, studying the brain and behavior, I've been observing, especially because now that my husband's back as a CEO of a public corporation and I watch the precision 
and the discipline and the consistency with which he works. It reminded me of how people should be doing business and how they really do business, you know, because we, like I said before, we already know what to do with our money, you know, spend less, save more, but we don't, we know what to do, but we don't do what we know. We do what we've practiced. And he being a serial entrepreneur has practiced, you know, mastering the game of business with multiple successes under his belt, lifelong inventor of really cool stuff. And so it made me think about what this week's show needed to be about. And since it's the end of the quarter and I've been watching him sweat bullets every day, uh, figuratively and literally, <laughs> um, that I thought this would be really great. So when we talk about our financial plan, so if you've been, if this has been your first full season exposed to the entire Keys to Riches and you started us with us from week one at Acceptance and Affirmation and you're here at Become a Voracious Reader, there's one thing that, you know, we put this together in pieces. And although it is technically our first, uh, our first, financial quarter together using the keys to riches financial philosophy. It isn't a full one because we had to make up time with the collecting of data to do our analysis first with our take action, make assessment. So now what we're going to do is I want to actually have you look at things as you start to do last week's key, which was review, revise and recommit. I'm going to show you where people drop the ball. So as we start the next season and you get the full exposure of the keys all over again, and each and every day you're already practicing the techniques that we've learned this season, you'll be able to more effectively implement these techniques and see where things go sideways. You are listening to the maestro of Mula, Michael Terry, and Heather Wagonhalls on Unlock Your Wealth Radio. This segment is sponsored in part by KeepMyID.org, the only service that actually prevents identity theft. All others are just monitoring services. Put your credit on lockdown with their special offer for Unlock Your Wealth Radio listeners and visit visit our website at unlockyourwealthradio.com forward slash keep my ID and click on the link to start protecting your financial future right now. So as I was talking about this financial quarter and how we've closed it out and the things that my husband does each and every day and the things that you might not be doing, some of the things we fall off on is accountability. And one of the things, you know, Peter Drucker said, what gets measured gets managed. And I've loved this quote, and I've used this quote for a bazillion years when I talk about why we have to measure anything. And if you think about it, whether it's you're managing your money or you're managing your business or you're managing your waistline, tracking is the key. So Peter Drucker says, what gets measured gets managed. And I say what gets measured and managed gets mastered. Because remember, we've talked early on in Take Emotion Out of the Picture and also in um, our Hope for the Best, Plan for the Worst. And we talk about perfect practice. You can go to the driving range and hack away at a bucket of balls every day, and it's only going to make you better at hacking away at a bucket of balls every day. If you go to the driving range and you bring a professional instructor or coach, whatever you want to call them, to the driving range with you and then begin working on different parts of your swing. And now you are not just practicing, but you are perfecting the practice. Practice does not make perfect. Only perfect practice makes perfect. So you can go and hack or you can take a small amount of instruction and exponentially increase your effectiveness. It, it makes me think of this, you know, quote I heard from a time management guy back when I was in high school. We had this really proactive um, uh, history teacher, and he would bring in his friends who were, who were different professionals as guest speakers. And the one time management guy said, if you spent 20% of your time planning what you're going to do, whether it's a project, a trip, your life, school, whatever it is, if you spend 20% of your time planning and planning can also incorporate learning and education, like learning what you need to do in order to do whatever the said project is. Mm -hmm. If you spend 20% of the time planning of the whole 100% of the time you have to accomplish a given task, you will complete it 
in less than the 80% of time left over. Mm -hmm. So what makes people successful isn't just the planning, but the measurement of the activity. And that's why did you make your numbers this quarter is an important question I asked in the meme on our Instagram account. If you're not already following us, please go to Instagram, instagram.com forward slash unlock your wealth and give us a follow. I'm able to publish more often on Instagram because it's it's an easier platform. It's you know faster than having to log into WordPress and write a post and edit a post. I can just put my thoughts up there. Yeah. Whether I'm recording something or I create a cute little meme for some impact for you to think about. So what gets measured gets managed and what gets managed, measured and managed gets mastered. And so we're looking for financial mastery, not overnight. We're looking for consistency over time. So if you set a goal... And I'm just going to use these numbers to keep the math simple because there'll be lots of zeros to keep track of if I don't. So if my husband's goal, and this isn't the goal, but if my husband's goal was to make $30,000 for the month and he had 30 days in that month because he is able to sell on Saturday and Sunday. Uh, so let's just you know use that as an example. So he has a 30-day month, not like a 20-day month, like many Monday through Friday businesses. He has a 30-day month. So he needs to sell how much a day, Miguel? If it's 30,000 and there's 30 days in the he month. Needs to sell $1,000 a day. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. So if you know the goal is 30,000 and today goes by and you make sales and then tomorrow goes by and you make some more sales, but you don't look at how much and you're at day 27, how much at day 27 should we have earned at $1,000 a day? 27000 Okay, but I'm at sixteen. Well, you're in, you're in a lot of trouble. Yes, because now I have three days to make up another 15000 So now I don't have to sell 1000 a day. I get to sell $5,000 a day yeah. for the next three days to make my quarter. So because we use the tool in our break the budget of reduce it to the ridiculous. And for those of you who have taken the keys to riches workshop, you know what I'm talking about. Or if you've taken some of the, of the personal finance for professional success workshop, you've also learned reduce it to the ridiculous. It's an incredible sales training tool that I was taught. And, and I thought if you can use this technique for selling and relieving people of their cash wouldn't it be cool if you could use it for saving and investing that cash? And so that's why I came up with Reduce It to the Ridiculous. And so if you know that you need to make $30,000 a month, or let's just take the quarter because we're talking at a quarter. A quarter is three months. So if the monthly goal was 30 and the quarterly goal was 90 and you're in the th you know third week of the third month and you now just find out that you've got five days left to earn $25,000, yeah. that's a problem. Yeah. Especially if, because you're asking yourself, if the goal is $1,000 a day, you need to know right away that you're missing the mark. Why? Because you're not planning properly. You're no, it's just that you're not executing what yeah. you planned. And so you need to know. So if I, if my goal today is the thousand bucks, and I sell 800, I can do one of two things, okay? I can amortize that $200 over the rest of the month, or I can put it up as a goal for tomorrow to make up the slack. So tomorrow isn't just 1,000, it's it's 1,000 plus another 200. Right. If I have 20 days left to make that up, then that's an extra $10 a day to relieve the pressure. Right. Because if I can't sell $1,000, how the heck am I going to sell $5,000 a day right. to meet the numbers? It's not realistic. It can be done, but it's not realistic. And again, because we talk about the scooch factor, because we're set in our little comfort zone. And if we get too close to the edge, our subconscious brings us back to the middle again. It's like a little thermostat up and down, up and down. So that's that's why we have to measure because we have to know. So, so, and measuring works the other way too. So if my goal today is to sell a thousand dollars and I sell $2,500, but I never check 
and I move on to another sales technique tomorrow, and then the next day I switch it up again. If I don't measure what I did today, if my goal was 1,000 and I did 2,500, mm-hmm. I did 150% of my goal, I need to know, was that an anomaly? Because what if it doesn't happen? What if I don't sell 2,500 tomorrow and I changed my game? I need to know what caused the anomaly because are my $1,000 goals too low? Should I be higher? Mm-hmm. Or is there a marketing, a particular marketing avenue that I didn't consider, but I might have accidentally found out about? What prompted the overage? Because that could be a missed opportunity, just, just as serious as not making your goals, exceeding your goals and not understanding why is just as bad. Yeah. So what we have to do is we must measure. And if you're at the end of your financial quarter and you said you were going to sell X number of widgets and you're not anywhere near it, if you didn't break that down and use our reduce it to the ridiculous, like every day my husband knows how much he has to sell. Mm -hmm. And every day he either wipes his brow in relief or he wipes his brow sweating how he's going to make up the difference. Either way, he's wiping his brow. But that's why we must measure. We must measure our results because without that measurement tool, how are we going to know if we're on target to miss our goals? You can't just check at the end of the month. Well, let's see if we made it because it doesn't work. It doesn't work. You are not going to be successful. What gets measured and managed gets mastered. Thank you, Peter Drucker, for pointing me in the right direction. So that's what we have to focus on. So if you are at this end of your fiscal quarter and you said you were going to sell five homes this month and you've got one in escrow, but it's not closing for 60 days, where along the way, that's 1.25 transactions a week you must do in a four-week month. If you've got the goal of five houses... That's one and a one and a quarter houses a week. How did you not know you weren't getting that? Because you weren't measuring. You were probably, woe is me, yeah. nothing's working, blah, blah, blah. Change your tactics. Yeah. One of my friends said to me once, if something isn't working, don't do it harder. Don't change the goal. This is what I say. Don't change your goals if it's not working out. Change your tactics. And so that's what the quarterly checkup is all about. So did you make your numbers? Yes. Hmm. How? Did you exceed them? And was it by a lot or a little? What worked? Do more of that next quarter. What didn't work? Why didn't it work? If it's an anomaly, why? Keep doing it. If it's a market issue, a lack of demand issue, stop it. Business is simple. It's not easy, but it's very, very simple. And all you have to do is pay attention and measure. Measurement is your answer towards creating success because it gives you the information you need right when you need it. Because every time you make a measurement, you have more information to make a new decision. You don't have to be stuck with the bad, crappy decisions of yesterday. If you constantly seek new information, you're going to succeed. Thank you guys all so much for making our first big season of Unlock Your Wealth Live a success. I'm so excited. I didn't even get to tell you. Okay, we've got our women's empowerment season coming up next week. We're kicking off the season with best-selling author, lecturer, mentor, and success and business strategist Sharon Lecter joining us, as well as a powerhouse full of all female guests this next season. And if you haven't bought your tickets already, westvalleywomen.org, come see me speak at the West Valley Women's Annual Hat Luncheon, April 3rd. There's still a couple tickets left. Grab them, come meet me, and you will get our coveted, because this is the only event I've ever given it away, personal finance tips for women. So if you want to be a part of the show, I would love to have you. And then we can sit and chat afterwards after I speak. But please be a part of the event. And uh, that's it for this season. I guess it's a wrap on season 34. For the the maestro of Moolah, Michael Terry, I'm Heather Wagonhals. Now go out and unlock your wealth today. UnlockYourWealthRadio.com is produced by Heather Wagonhals and the Unlock Your Wealth Foundation. 
UnlockYourWealthRadio.com and its affiliates are copyrighted 2018 with all rights reserved. For more information on the Keys to Riches Financial Wellness Series, please visit our website at www.unlockyourwealth.com.